In Times Square, officers on guard. In Washington, protecting historic monuments on horseback, on foot. In L.A., a call to be on alert for possible terror attacks. Fourth of July fears heating up. Severe holiday storms, the tornadoes, the deadly road collapse, and the flash flood rescues in the south. Dangerous heat in the west. 30 million people at risk tonight. At a popular tourist attraction, the woman killed, the accused gunman, a felon wanted by immigration agents. And enjoy your ride, because we sure will. The sign found inside a Baltimore police van tonight threatening to reignite tensions there all over again. From ABC News World Headquarters, this is ABC World News Tonight with David Muir. Good evening and thank you for joining us as we head into this holiday weekend. I'm Cecilia Vega in for David Muir and we begin tonight with America on high alert this 4th of July. Police ratcheting up security across the country. Officers out in full force. Authorities in L.A. saying this is the highest terror alert since 9-11. At tourist attractions, heavily armed guards, metal detectors out, dogs on patrol, checkpoints set up. In Boston, the commissioner there saying a lone wolf attack is the city's worst nightmare. ABC's Joe Benitez now telling us no one is taking any chances. Tonight, a nation on alert. Major cities ramping up security here in New York and across the country. In Washington, D.C., U.S. Park Police are on horseback at the National Mall. We're aware of what the discussion and chatter is around the 4th of July events and, and all those threats, and we take those in, into account. Authorities worried about lone wolves fueled by an ISIS social media campaign. Officers everywhere are preparing for the worst. In cities like Boston, police are deploying special teams, undercover behavioral detection officers. Memories of the marathon bombing still fresh. Preparations underway for the iconic 4th of July Boston pop celebration. Up to a half million people could attend. In Chicago, huge events. ABC's Alex Perez is there. There's already a stepped up police presence. Officers will be working 12 hour shifts this weekend and it will be a busy one. Big crowds like this expected everywhere. The Chicago Cubs and the White Sox both playing at home. Three huge Grateful Dead concerts and 100,000 people expected at the Lakefront Fireworks Show. In Los Angeles, 300,000 people expected at events. LAPD is asking people to be on the lookout for anyone wearing bulky clothes, carrying suspicious items, or leaving packages behind. And in the New York area, officers patrolling from the ground, sky, and water. Obviously, this is a very important area. I mean, look what's behind us. So many people are going to be focused in on this area. There's going to be, uh, obviously, large amounts of uh, crowds coming here for the fireworks. So we have uh, increased patrols, and uh, we're just here for basically you know, the safety of the citizens on the water. And here in New York, counterterrorism officials say that besides all of those officers patrolling these streets, the city will add another 7,000 officers this weekend alone. Cecilia? Okay, Gio and our team across the country, thank you. And we turn now to those severe storms kicking off the holiday weekend across so much of the country. In Tennessee, tornadoes touching down, knocking into homes, knocking down trees. Drenching rains left residents clinging to rope, trying to cross a flooded creek. 30 million people in the path tonight, and ABC senior meteorologist Rob Marciano has the damage and the forecast. Tonight, the southeast under the gun again. Heavy rain over already saturated ground causing big problems in Tennessee. This road in Crossville giving way, causing a car wreck that killed one person. And flash floods just northeast of Nashville. Bridges washed out, people stranded. This man traversing the rapids with a kind of makeshift rope rescue. This auto repair shop inundated, cars swept away in the torrent. This just hours after rare July tornadoes hit the state. Whatever they was in their path it, when they did touch down was damaged. In Tupelo, Mississippi, a deluge. The city experiencing its wettest July day on record. More than five inches falling and counting. Parts of that state seeing more than nine inches of rain just since this morning. And Rob is here now with the holiday forecast. So what's in store for tonight? Well, I'll just tell you the same areas that got the flooding rain, still getting rain tonight, all along the stubborn front that we talked about last night. Look at these numbers. Just since this morning, almost 10 inches in New Albany and from Oklahoma to Kentucky, almost five inches of rainfall. Tomorrow we push this a little bit to the east. This is where the flood watches are out. So that's what we'll be watching for the holiday. And a lot of rain painted from New England all the way back through New Mexico, but two to three inches plus across the areas that have already gotten hit. All right, your 4th of July fireworks, scattered storms across the south, 
iffy across parts of the northeast. It'll be a rainy a bit across the Intermountain West and very, very dry still on the West Coast. A lot of people on alert this weekend. Rob, thank you. So many people will be outside enjoying the fireworks, but not everywhere. In drought-plagued California, some celebrations canceled over fears that just one spark could ignite a massive wildfire. Here now, ABC's Kendis Gibson with the warning about just how dangerous these explosives can be. Firefighters on the front lines across eight western states. And tonight, the fear of new fires sparked by celebration. Not real happy about having firework sales right now at this moment. People lost their home. In the grips of an epic drought, California is seeing its worst fire conditions on record, which is why so many communities are canceling their public fireworks this 4th. Bass Lake in Northern California trading its 75-year tradition for a laser light show. I'm excited to see something different. A laser show will be great. Fireworks sparking 18,000 fires every year in this country. Despite the fire danger and many communities canceling their public displays, individuals can still buy fireworks in many California towns. Holy but a reminder of just how explosive they can be, this box van full of fireworks somehow caught fire on a California highway this week, setting off sparks and explosions. Experts say there are ways to play it safe if your community allows backyard fireworks this weekend. Never set them off near dry grass. Always have a bucket of water or a hose nearby and wet used fireworks before disposing of them. The conditions out west are so bone dry. Officials say it's critical for anyone considering buying or using fireworks to first check the rules in their local community. Cecilia? Good to remember. Kendis, thank you. And to San Francisco now outrage over an apparent random shooting at a popular tourist attraction. A young woman killed while walking with her father along the historic waterfront. Federal investigators say the man who did it, a convicted felon and undocumented immigrant who never should have been out of jail in the first place. ABC's Aditi Roy with the sheriff's response. Tonight, these flowers for a woman killed while out on a stroll in one of San Francisco's most popular tourist spots. 32-year-old Catherine Steinle killed in broad daylight while out with her dad and a friend on the Embarcadero. Police identifying the gunman as Francisco Sanchez, a man with a long criminal history. There does not appear to be any connection between the victim and the suspect. Police arresting the shooter after getting cell phone pictures from witnesses of the suspect. His gun, they say, also turning up in the water near the pier. Tonight, her family in mourning. We loved Kate, and we loved Kate, and I'll love her to the day I die. And tonight, many questions about why the suspected shooter was on the streets in the first place. Immigration officials are laying part of the blame on local law enforcement. Officials saying the undocumented immigrant has been deported five times, and U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement telling ABC News that after Sanchez's latest arrest for drugs, they asked local law enforcement to turn him over. But the detainer was not honored. Instead, law enforcement released him. An attorney for the San Francisco Sheriff's Department, which released Sanchez, said they had no legal basis to hold him and that the city does not turn over illegal immigrants unless they have an active warrant. Cecilia? Aditi, thank you. And to Baltimore now and the discovery inside a police van threatening to reignite tensions in that city all over again. The police custody death of Freddie Gray triggering violent protests this spring. Six officers charged after he suffered a severe spinal cord injury following a rough ride in a van. Tonight, this sign found inside another van. Its message, enjoy your ride, because we sure will. Here now, ABC senior national correspondent Jim Avila with the controversy and the new investigation. Tonight, outrage about what's written behind the door of this Baltimore police van. In this photo obtained by ABC News, you can clearly read, enjoy your ride, cause we sure will. It was in just such a police transport van that Freddie Gray died in police custody. And now Baltimore police announcing an internal investigation to find out who put those words there, calling the sign concerning and unacceptable. You, you should have some, some type of consequence, some suspension or some time off without pay. Freddie Gray's autopsy found he suffered a high-energy neck and spine injury while in the back of the police van. Some Baltimore police have been accused in the past of purposely giving rough rides as a means of torture. 
Christine Abbott, an assistant librarian at Johns Hopkins University, is suing Baltimore, claiming cops gave her a maniacal drive while in handcuffs after she was arrested for a noise violation. It was horrifying. I mean, we were bumping around. I couldn't hold on to anything. It was just really scary. Baltimore police deny her allegations. As for the six officers charged in connection with Freddie Gray's death, their trial is scheduled to begin this fall. Cecilia? Jim, thank you. And we turn overseas now to Greece, a country quickly running out of cash. Protesters tonight clashing with police there as bank officials say come Monday morning, ATMs will run dry unless Europe steps in and loans more cash. ATM withdrawals cut to less than $70 a day and residents there crushing banks trying to collect what little cash is left. Next to the danger lurking in the ocean just as millions of Americans hit the beach. A fisherman pulling this shark from the waters off North Carolina today. Seven shark attacks reported along the state's state's coast in the past month, but beaches there are still staying open. ABC's Philip Mena with the alert going out tonight. In North Carolina today, a race to the beach. Anna Corman on vacation shooting the video. About 15 of us hightailed it down there to see what was going on. A shark more than six feet long caught by a fisherman off Kill Devil Hills and eventually released. It was the biggest shark that I've ever seen in person and was quite scary and that has kept me out of the water for the rest of the day. Another recent close encounter in Florida where a fisherman inadvertently hooked a shark and was quickly surrounded. There was about 10 bull sharks swimming underneath the boat. Kind of makes you feel what you thought they would feel like whenever you watch the movie Jaws. His kayak capsized. It's close enough to make me pretty scared and I swam a lot faster than I ever thought I could have. That close call three miles off the shore, but here in North Carolina, real concern about swimming near fishing piers where sharks can swarm. Today, no restriction on beach fishing here in Ocracoke, where a man was attacked just days ago in waist deep water. I'm worried a little bit, but I'm not gonna get out there that far now since I know like there's been shark attacks. Still visitors pouring off the ferry here and onto the beach. To keep swimmers safe, officials have posted these flyers around beaches here with tips on how to avoid a shark attack. Including avoid wearing bright colors or shiny jewelry. Don't swim after dusk or in the dark and stay in groups and close to shore to stay safe. Yet many of the recent 11 attacks here in the Carolinas have happened in shallow water and in broad daylight. Cecilia? Philip, thank you. And to Hawaii tonight, where history landed on the runway. This plane fueled by only the sun, wrapping up a grueling five-day flight from Japan, setting the record for the world's longest non-stop solo flight. Next stop, Phoenix and New York. The pilot saying yoga and occasional 20-minute naps helped him cope. Well, no rest for the U.S. women's soccer team this 4th of July weekend. Team USA taking to the World Cup field Sunday, aiming for the history books. The American women's contest rival with Japan, promising to be a grudge match to remember. ABC's Jesse Palmer reporting in from Vancouver tonight. Jesse. Cecilia, coming into the World Cup, Team USA was ranked number two in the world. So you'd expect them to have a lot of confidence after knocking off the number one ranked team. But make no mistake about it, Team USA will have quite the challenge in the finals against Japan. That's it. The USA is going to the final. Team USA heading to the World Cup final Sunday night after shutting out powerhouse Germany earlier this week. That goal leading them to the ultimate rematch, a face-off with rival team Japan. The reigning World Cup champs dealt Team USA a devastating loss in 2011's World Cup final during a penalty kick shootout. Japan is ready for battle after beating the England team in a heartbreaking finish when England kicked the ball into their own goal in the final second. Team USA is back on the field, practicing for the most important game of their lives. We know that uh, we've got to play our best. We know that we've got to do everything possible, leave everything out on the field. The players and an entire nation ready for the rematch, believing their team will win. And several of the Team USA team members have told us that this is the dream matchup they've wanted all along. A shot at redemption after that heartbreaking defeat in 2011 and a chance to bring home their first World Cup title in 16 years. Cecilia? All right, Jesse, we believe. Thank you. And there is still much more ahead on World News tonight this Friday. A medical.